He presides over his beloved Dorchester to this day, looking out at a town that's changed so much in some ways, in others not at all. Uh, well, he's Dorchester's most important son. Um, Thomas Hardy represents the Dorchester folk, country folk, working folk, real folk, and people with Dorchester here identified with what he wrote about. He called it Wessex, but in every Wessex place in his novels and poems, there is a Dorset equivalent that you can actually go and see. And go and see him, they do. Hardy is everywhere in this small rural town, from the obvious to the obscure. Look up and you see a skyline that hasn't changed since the day Hardy first put pen to paper. The madding crowd aren't turning their back on him, but the OCR exam board is. Out with Hardy, in with a whole host of new writing, from disabled poets to black and Asian writers to LGBT plus voices. And these voices are loud. I spoke to the exam board and I asked them to explain from their point of view why they feel this makes sense. They said they didn't want to talk to us. I then approached several of the new writers to see if they had anything to say about being placed on the syllabus. They had nothing to say either. But Hardy has plenty to say. The dusk of evening was the proper hour at which a true impression of this suggestive place could be received. Standing in the middle of the arena at this time, there by degrees became apparent its real vastness, melancholy, impressive, lonely. Intrigues were arranged there, tentative meetings were there experimented after divisions and feuds. Thomas Hardy's facing a different type of division today, a new yet familiar feud that rankles as deep as any that played out on this spot in Hardy's fictional Casterbridge. Where does it stop? Do you continue the take-off, he said, when to keep replacing it with you? Because, um, after all, we've gone a long time now, haven't we, reading Thomas Hardy? I personally agree with bringing in new voices. It has to be done if any progression is going to be made in any way, shape or form. But I'm of the opinion of having the new voices side by side with the voices from the past so that people have a reference point for the new voices. That from the Thomas Hardy Society. This from the MP for West Dorset. He agrees too. So much so, he's written to the Department for Education, demanding Dorset's native be returned to the exam room. Um, I, I don't see there's any association with Empire here. For me, as the MP for West Dorset, I see a local author who had um, a pretty tough upbringing, was not well off, he challenged lots of things, made many successes, and whose ashes are now buried in Westminster Abbey to recognise all those things. I think that's someone to be celebrated and recognised, and that's why I've decided to uh, challenge this in the way I have done. His ashes are buried in Westminster, in Poet's Corner, but his heart is here, in his beloved Dorset. No one doubts Dorset will forever honour its most important son. The hope now that his words aren't buried with him. Jeff Moody, GB News.